Good afternoon. I'm excited to welcome you to today's alumni career webinar, Leveraging Your LinkedIn Profile. My name is Lucy Sandell, and I'm the Associate Director for Career Programs here at the Alumni Association. Our office is committed to helping provide alumni with the resources they need to stay competitive in an ever-changing job market and support the alumni community with career resources, networking channels, and job search capabilities. I want to remind you all that Career Month begins on November 1st and runs through November 17th. We sincerely hope that if an on-site event is hosted in your city that you'll participate and grow your network with like-minded alumni in your area. For those unable to attend in person, we'll be hold, hosting a virtual event on November 14th. It's my privilege to introduce to you our president, presenter today, UChicago staff member Lauren Forrest. Lauren, formerly a LinkedIn employee, will be teaching us how to best utilize LinkedIn's capabilities. Through client relationship building and thorough conversations, Lauren successfully consulted over 300 talent acquisition professionals on how to build a recruitment strategy, including creative branding and marketing, to bring and retain top talent at their organizations. In this webinar, Lauren will go over how to leverage your LinkedIn profile to be positioned as a competitive candidate. Now let me welcome Lauren. Thank you, Lucy. Um, I'm excited to do this webinar today. I think that there's a lot of great things that LinkedIn can provide and that people can learn um, from taking a deeper dive into, into how it works and what LinkedIn is used for. As Lucy mentioned, I previously worked at LinkedIn and I worked in our small, our corporate area with small businesses. Um, a lot of people might not be aware of or know that LinkedIn offers online products that they sell to recruiters and HR professionals in order to allow companies and recruiters to source for talent on the network. Um, the reason why it's so important for your profile to really be filled out and to be it positioned correctly is because people are paying to be on the network and find people like yourselves who might be looking for new employment opportunities, um, part-time, full-time, whatever you might be in search of. And if you're positioning yourself in the right way, those individuals that are sourcing for talent and are paying for talent will, um, will be able to find you. So I like to start my presentation with something fun. Um, a little bit of LinkedIn trivia. So some of these um, I think are really good in understanding the, the, the reach that LinkedIn truly does have. So how many members does LinkedIn have worldwide? What is the number one activity on LinkedIn? And how many members does LinkedIn get per second? So the network is 450 million members worldwide and they gain two new members per second, meaning two new people per second sign up for a LinkedIn account. And the number one profile activity on LinkedIn is looking at other people's profiles. So this is another reason why it's so important that your profiles are built out and that you're positioning yourself in, um, in the way that you want to be positioned because that's what people are doing on the network. So thinking about how can I be effective on LinkedIn, um, when I dealt with a lot of my clients at LinkedIn, I realized that a lot of them didn't even really know what the purpose of LinkedIn was, and it was something that I was excited to educate people on and still am. Um, so enhancing your profile, connecting with people on the network, following and engaging with other individuals, professionals, or companies, and staying present and active. Um, these are ways that you can really maximize the network to give you what you're looking for um, and do it in a really easy, simple way. So again, some of these in more of a deep dive. Um, but I think that anyone that is on LinkedIn should be active on it. Otherwise, there's kind of no point in having a profile and a presence. So when we talk about enhancing your profile, um, I think there's easy adjustments that can be made that really help to engage the, your network and attract the, the eye of a recruiter or an HR professional. 
So the number one thing is your profile picture. You are 11 times more likely to be viewed if you have a profile picture than if you don't. So the profile pictures at the top we can see are people at a bar, they're, you know, maybe like with their family, a scenic picture. I would avoid using these as a profile picture and get a professional headshot. Easy to do if you even sit, most cameras um, on the phone are like very nice and high quality. So even if you're at work one day and you go stand by a blank wall or even your company's logo um, and have someone take a picture of you, I think that is completely fine. You do not need to get a professional headshot taken, um, but it does need to come across as professional. Also make sure that we can see your face. A lot of people will do like full body shots of them, you know, on vacation in Europe or they're with like their whole family. Um, that is not what people want to see. So a headshot is key. Something else that I would do is updating your contact info. So at the bottom of your profile, you have the ability to put your work or personal email, other social media accounts. Um, you can also customize your LinkedIn URL, which I'll show you how to do. Um, but I would put this information in because a lot of times if you're maybe you're not always on LinkedIn and you want someone to contact you in a quick manner, um, I think that including some direct contact info can be very helpful, especially if you're looking for employment. This gives someone a really easy way to be able to reach out to you. So with the URL, I'm going to actually go into my profile and show you how to do this. It's very simple. So I'm in my LinkedIn. This is my home page. I'm going to go to profile. And when I click on profile, I can see here under my picture is this link. And if I click on this icon next to that, I can go in here and on the right hand side I can customize my profile URL. I would try a couple different things. Um, for example, I couldn't put Lauren Forrest because that was already taken, so I had to do Forrest Lauren. So you might have to play around with it a bit, but it's a really easy way to send someone um, your URL and it just looks a lot cleaner. So I would definitely take advantage of the ability to do that. Something else that's an easy, um, easy quick fix is updating the title under your name. So what happens is when you have your experience listed out and your whatever present role and company you're at, LinkedIn will pre-populate that information into the title underneath your name. But really it's used to express and describe what you currently do in a more creative way. So this one, David has Senior Pro Product Marketing Manager at Microsoft. And he switched it to Enabling Service Provider Business Opportunities with Unified Communication Solutions from Microsoft. So then I get an idea. If I quickly glance at David's profile, I quickly understand what he does. Also keep in mind that internal job titles aren't always as translatable to other industries and or companies. So this is a good way of if I have, if my internal job title is different than whatever company uh, might be looking at me, they could get an idea quickly of maybe it's the same type of uh, job responsibilities. Another easy fix to kind of educate the person who's looking at your profile on your personality and your professional experience is your summary. This is a little lengthy for my taste, but I do think that the summary is a great place where you can advertise yourself. The summary is also a great place where you can advertise your company. So a lot of times people will talk about what they currently do, but they'll also tie into like what their company does and what they like about their current organization and I would highly recommend doing that. I wouldn't use this as a place to list out everything you've done. Um, that's not engaging with your audience and it's also it's all listed on your profile so there's no need to take up this very valuable space that sits on the top of your profile just listing out everything you've done.
I would say keep it to no more than like two paragraphs of four to five sentences and make it really interesting for someone to read and feel comfortable at conveying what you are looking for, what you want, and what your personality is. Um, it's a professional profile, but people really want to see your personality shine through. So this is a great space to use that. Something else that's really important is when you go to fill out your experience on your profile, under your summary, well, you can list your experience. You want to ensure that you're connecting to your company's page on LinkedIn. So the tricky thing is a lot of organizations obviously have a page and a presence on LinkedIn. However, they might have multiple pages for different locations or different areas of their business. Um, so what you want to do is ensure that the page that you're linking up to is the one that you should be. And the reason this is important is because two, two parts. One, it's important for you to be linked to the correct place so that if I was looking at your profile and I click on this company right here, it would take me to your company and it would be the right one. Secondly, anyone that links to that page, that company is going to be, it's going to feed into the larger company's page and that way if someone is on the page looking at information about your organization, they might click on however many employees are there and they can start looking through the employee population. So it's a huge thing that can very easily be missed, so make sure that you're doing that correctly. Um, something else that you have the ability to do on your different experiences, work experiences, is you can add um, media. So you can add, if you worked on a really great marketing piece, you can add a link to where all of that information is housed. You can add a YouTube video. You can add a PDF, um, an image, anything that you want to make your profile more interactive. It definitely makes people want to sit on your profile longer and um, it gives someone a really good idea of some of the great things that you've accomplished with your jobs. So enhancing your profile with skills and endorsements, um, I've heard mixed reviews on this. And I think that if this piece of LinkedIn is utilized in the correct way, it can be really, really valuable to someone's profile. So a lot of times I would hear things like, well, I just go on LinkedIn and people randomly endorse me for things that I never worked with them on and I don't necessarily even think are my skills. So my, my take on it is if you want thoughtful endorsements, give out thoughtful endorsements. So make sure that if someone is endorsing you out of the blue and you don't really feel comfortable with it or you don't agree with it, send them a message, let them know, be comfortable doing that, and also thoughtfully endorse others so that they will do that in turn. And you can always reach out to people that you've worked with and say, hey, I'm looking to beef up my profile a bit. These are five things that I think I did really well when we worked together. Do you agree? Would you mind endorsing me for that? So taking control and ownership of this part of your profile, I think, can be really helpful. So this kind of just lists out the, the things that we just walked through. Um, they're pretty straightforward, and I think the, the nice thing about LinkedIn is when you log in, the system will prompt you to fill out these sections. So hopefully the information provided just gives you a little bit more guidance around how to. So any questions before we move on to connecting and building your network? Yes, we definitely have questions. Thanks, Lauren. Um, you talked about a professional uh, photo. And while that you know, makes sense, what if you work in the Silicon Valley where the organizations are a little more casual? That's a good question. And coming from LinkedIn where it was, you know, jeans and hoodie uh, attire at work, I can totally relate to that. I think that it's all a matter of what industry you're in and what, what job you're going to be applying for or that you do currently do and how you want to be portrayed. So if you're um, working in tech and it's very laid back and casual, you can 
wear a hoodie in your picture if you want. And um, I think the key is like as long as you're conveying your personality and aligning with what your industry does, and as long as it's a headshot and we can see your face, that's all that matters. So definitely add your personality and your spin on it. But um, I think that you know there's no right or wrong answer, but we definitely want to make sure it's a headshot. Great, thanks, that's very useful. Um, you were talking about headline versus title. So could you go over again what the difference should be? Sure, and I'm actually going to hop into my profile because I think it helps give a, a more of an explanation of the difference. So your job title is going to be located under experience. So here at UChicago, my job title is Associate Director, Young Alumni Program. Up here, you can see under my name, I've got Connecting UChicago Young Alumni through Creative Programming. This gives a snapshot of what I do without listing out my title. And I think the reason this is so helpful is because this gives someone a really clear idea of what I might be doing at my job versus Associate Director where that could mean something different at every organization. So I think that's the big difference, is you want to give a snapshot overview of what you're doing versus what your job title is. OK, that's clear. What about the background? You were just where you were on your profile. You have a, a nice background. Yeah, so something that's really cool about LinkedIn is because they want you to personalize your profile to convey your own personality, um, you have the ability to change your background photo. So this is the one that I've chosen. They have pre-populated options that you can choose from or you can upload a picture on your own. A lot of people end up doing um, city views of the city they currently live in um, or something scenic. If I go to edit background, I picked this one, um, and you can you can change them. You can make them whatever you'd like. But this is where you could go ahead and upload an image. And I would suggest uploading something because if you don't, it's a blank space. And even if you want a simple background that's just one maybe one color or something easy, go ahead and do that. But definitely put something there because it makes your picture stand out more. This is much more prominent. It just looks a lot cleaner. Um, can you tell us a, can you tell us a little bit more about your customizable profile link? Sure. Um, we walked through the how tos of doing it. Um, so I think that's been explained. I think that the reason it's important is because it's so much again more professional looking and cleaner and easier. Um, easier for you to direct someone to. So if I'm in LinkedIn, I can, let me go back in. I should probably just stay in LinkedIn. Um, if I go back into LinkedIn and I do this, this is going to take me directly to my profile. So if I typed in, you know, someone else, this is one of my old coworkers, hopefully it works, it takes me directly to her profile. So it's much easier to find someone doing this than copying and pasting a huge drawn out URL. Okay, so moving forward, we're going to talk about connecting on LinkedIn and building out your professional network. So why does it matter to connect with people? Your network grows with every connection you make. So I'm, I'm very thoughtful about my professional network connections. Um, I had a lot of clients that would just haphazardly add me and I ended up going back and going through my connections and removing them because what would happen was on my news feed I would see all this information filter through and I didn't really know who they who it was from or who was sharing it so I ended up going through and um, removing some of my connections because I do want to know who I'm connected to and the reason it matters is I got my job at LinkedIn and my job at UChicago leveraging the LinkedIn network. I reached out to people that I was connected to 
that were connected to people at LinkedIn and asked for introductions. So if I wouldn't have had that initial connection, I might not have gotten my job at LinkedIn because I would have had no one to introduce me to current employees of the company. So that's why these connections can lead to referrals, career, career changes, and they can also be great business connections in general. So a lot of people are concerned or um, don't know how to go about the connection route. So something I would say is, first of all, you can only message people in your first degree network if you do not have a premium LinkedIn account. So if you're looking to connect with people, I would also be like very thoughtful about it because if enough people say, I don't know this person or they identify it as spam, LinkedIn will be in contact with you. They preserve their membership um, privacy and take it pretty seriously because if there's no one on the network, there is no LinkedIn. So the way I go about connecting is if I meet someone at an event, a networking event, I will connect with them that, that day or the next day and I'll send a thoughtful message. Um, LinkedIn pre-populates text that says something along the lines of, I wanted to connect with you um, to build my network or stay connected or something, something along those lines. Remove that and put a personal message. So you could say something along the lines of, hey, hey John, I met you last night at the tech event in Chicago. I wanted to stay connected. Um, looking forward to seeing you again at the next one or something along those lines and then sign it your name send it but the more you can be thoughtful in your connections the more it will do for you in the long run but I think time kills all deals so when you do meet someone add them quickly within the next 24 48 hours so they don't forget who you are so this is I'm going to go into my profile for this one. I think this is really cool. Um, LinkedIn has such a huge, tries very hard to connect alumni with alumni. So if I go to my network and I click find alumni, this is going to pull up, I went to DePaul, so it's going to pull up my DePaul page and it's going to show all students and alum. This is another great way to expand your network and gain connections. So for University of Chicago, what you could do is it would come filter under here. As long as you've got it on your profile, it will filter under find alumni under your network. Or you can come from this drop down and click universities and go the University of Chicago and my computer's being slow. There we go. Um, and then you'll click on the university page and you can click students and alumni and you can say I want to find someone who was here between these years that lives in New York, that works at JP Morgan and is identified in finance. And I can say oh Steven looks like someone that I might want to be connected with. I can send him a connection and include a note. So I think there's ways of doing it where you meet someone in person and you're interested in connecting or you seek out individuals that you're interested in. I would again be very careful about mass connecting. Um, that is definitely frowned upon and it's not the way to best utilize the network. But I think if you're interested in say I want to work at JP Morgan, I can send Stephen a note and say, hey, I'd love to do a 15-minute informational interview with you about your organization. Would you be open to that? Nine times out of ten people will say yes. So that's a good way to use the network and connect, especially from an al alumni standpoint. You can also join groups. Um, so just as we searched for universities, there's a drop-down option to search for groups. And say you're in, you know, recruiting. You can search recruiting groups that might be of importance to you. Um, that's another way to, to gain a larger network and talk with like-minded individuals that might be have a commonality in terms of industry or job function. 
And then you can always use the search option, um, which is pretty straightforward. Any questions from, uh, from that part of the discussion? Yes, I have three as a matter of fact. What is the benefit of posting articles in your news feeds? That's a great question. Um, that will definitely be more thoroughly answered through this portion of the presentation. But the, the, the reason why it matters is it keeps you relevant to your followers. So anytime that I post something in my, uh, from my LinkedIn page from me, everyone sees it in my news feed. So the more and more that I post, the more people are going to see of me. It keeps you relevant versus um, people kind of forgetting that you might be in their network. It also might be a great way if you're consistent and you're relevant in your own professional network, someone who I'm connected with might see that I'm posting stuff and their company might be hiring or maybe they're contracting work and they want to do business with my company and they might think of me because I'm popping up versus forgetting that I'm an option um, in that realm because I'm not sharing content and I'm not staying relevant. Cool. I look forward to hearing more about that. Uh, what do you put in the summary section? You talked about the summary section earlier. If you aren't working and you're looking for a new position. That's a great question and I think the summary section and what we talked about, I'll jump into my profile again. Um, everyone's probably sick of seeing my profile at this point, but <laughs> um, it's easier to, <laughs> to show it this way. Um, what I would do if I'm looking for work, actively looking and seeking opportunities, I think you can indicate that in your summary in a way that um, that explains what you want. So for example, when I was reaching out to people to learn more about working at U Chicago as, a, uh, as an employment opportunity for myself, I had, a, I had a pitch down. I was very comfortable telling people why I was leaving LinkedIn and why I wanted to come to U Chicago. It had nothing to do with LinkedIn. I loved being at LinkedIn. It was a great employer um, and a phenomenal experience, but my background and I, my heart is tied more toward the nonprofit industry. So when I was talking to people, I was able to convey that. So what I would do is if, if, you're, if you're openly seeking opportunity and you're not afraid of your manager or someone else seeing that you are, I would put in here something along the lines of what you're looking for and why you're looking for it. The why is a huge piece. Also up here, I would say something along the lines of, job seeker or like seeking employment opportunities in the nonprofit industry or in finance or in you know in business development whatever you're looking for that way recruiters can easily identify that you're looking for opportunities okay what's the best way to connect with someone from an association but you have no close connection to a person of that association that's a great question. Um, I actually worked with a lot of associations at one of my previous uh, companies and something I would suggest is just like we talked about groups, go search in LinkedIn and if I search and I pick my drop down and I go groups, type in the association that you're looking for and that will be a good way and join those associations and then you can start identifying people that are currently a part of that group that you might want to reach out to on a one-on-one -on -one level. So groups typically have a large group discussion and then you can start reaching out to people on an individual basis um, based on who you're interested in talking to. But that would be a good way of bridging um, the gap and kind of starting a conversation with people that you might not already know. All right, great questions. Um, so we're going to move forward and we're going to talk about how to follow and engage with networks on LinkedIn. So we briefly talked about why it matters to be engaged and following um, on LinkedIn. So something I would say in terms of following is um, you can follow companies and I think it's a great way to stay in the loop about certain companies, what they're doing business 
in terms of business. Um, and if you're interested in working at an organization, it gives you a great idea of what the organization is all about and you its talking points. So when you go into an interview, there's relevant information that's been shared on their company's page and you're able to, um, to articulate that and be part of the conversation instead of an observer of it. So again, if stories are shared, um, LinkedIn Pulse, I believe, is the largest self-publishing platform online right now, uh, which is huge, and that's a really great news stream. So if you go into your Pulse news feed, you can see a bunch of different articles that are catered toward what your interests are. Um, they do target you in that way, which is kind of nice. You don't have to sift through a ton of things, but it's great to comment share, like articles. Um, it also is another way to keep you relevant in your own news feed of, or in the news feed of people in your network. So I would definitely encourage this. I'm not someone who utilizes this as much as I could be, um, but I'm trying to work on that because I do think it, it makes a difference in your professional presence on the network. Following your company or school. So be following the University of Chicago's page as an alum, following your current company. And again, like I had mentioned before, following, um, following companies that you're interested in learning more about. Follow your competitors. They post things on here constantly. Um, usually companies, especially larger ones, have someone who is putting time and effort specific towards social media outlets. This is one of them. So I think following competitors is something that more people could utilize and it's super helpful. So that's something I would suggest doing. And anytime you see this careers tab on a page, this home page is a company page which is free of charge. A careers tab means that the company paid for that page. So it'll give you a good idea of what also what companies invest in. Um, I think companies that have career pages on LinkedIn understand LinkedIn and utilize it in a different way. They typically post most of their jobs on there. They typically have the products that allow the recruiters and HR professionals to source for talent. So anytime you see a careers tab, it means they're investing in LinkedIn, which is good to know. And then again, um, sharing things, following and engaging, we kind of spoke about this. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but I think also don't feel pressured to follow or engage in the way that um, that might not feel natural to you. So if you would rather be behind the scenes a little bit more, go ahead and do that. And maybe you're not the one sharing updates every day, three days, week, month, whatever works for you. Um, but I do think that there's plenty of ways to engage on the network and just find what makes you most comfortable. And then um, sharing statuses. Again, I had mentioned I'm not someone who does this very actively. Um, I do, however, like when I see people in my network doing it because it helps me stay in the loop. Microsoft, obviously, everyone's pretty familiar that they acquired LinkedIn earlier this year and my network is heavy with LinkedIn employees and so it was really interesting to see all of the things that they were sharing from Jeff Weiner's profile and, and, and down and onward. So um, I think that sharing updates can be interesting and really helpful for your network. So I'm trying to get better at doing it but um, I would definitely recommend doing that. And then anytime your company posts something that you think is relevant, I would share that to your network. And again, it encourages people to look at an organization that you're a part of and they might want to be a part of as well. So anytime you can help your company out in that regard, I think that's incredibly important and they look at it as a huge value add because it's essentially free marketing for their company if you share it to your network. And then we, we hopped in LinkedIn and looked at how to find the group that you're interested in. Um, something to be aware of with groups is some are private and locked and others aren't. So if you're interested in being a part of the group and it's locked, someone on the admin side who created the group or was um, or has administrative rights would have to add you to it. But I do think that if you can find groups that are specific and, um, and relevant to what you're interested in, it's a great way to join a conversation that might feel more, more specific to your needs. 
And then, of course, LinkedIn will suggest groups that you might be interested in based on your profile. So everything they target on the network is targeted based on what your profile reads. And then this gives you some info on how many groups you can join um, or if you want to start a group yourself. And then social media in general on LinkedIn, um, sharing articles, industry news, you can link it to your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever works for you. Um, but I think that really the, the I'm going to talk about some differences between the three of these. Um, but you can stay as connected or as separate as you wish. It's completely up to you. So these are some common questions that I would receive about um, LinkedIn. So why is it different from Facebook and Twitter? Um, well, first of all, companies use them differently. So LinkedIn is used as a platform to market, brand a company, and source and find talent. And on a personal level, LinkedIn is your professional network. Facebook and Twitter seem um, a lot more social in an aspect of um, sharing personal things versus professional. So I think that that's the big difference I view it as. Um, and so that's just something to note. Something else, how often should I log in? Um, I think logging in as often as you wish works. I'm in LinkedIn every day. I'm used to being in LinkedIn every day. Um, I like logging in on a daily basis and checking my news feed and seeing, you know, seeing what's going on. Uh, I look at it as a, as a news source, so that's how I use it. And I think once, if you're comfortable logging in once a week, do that and it'll build up as time goes on and as you find more use for the tool. And then we touched on the custom URL, which I highly recommend doing. Um, and we also talked about requesting to connect with someone. I do think making your, your message personalized and um, being thoughtful is, is key. And I also think including what you're asking for. So if you do want to talk to somebody because you are interested in their organization, make that clear and ask to, anytime you can ask someone for information versus something that you want them to do for you, they're much more likely to respond and be helpful. And then asking for an introduction. Um, so what I did was when I wanted to work at LinkedIn, I reached out to a handful of people I knew that knew people that worked there, and I knew I would feel comfortable reaching out to them. And I just said, hey, it's Lauren. Um, I know you're connected with X person. Would you mind putting me in touch? I'm interested in learning more about what it's like to be an employee at LinkedIn. And that was a really easy ask for me. And so I think keeping it short and sweet is always great, being direct. Um, so that's how I would go about doing that. Keep in mind you can't connect with people or send messages to people outside of your um, you can connect outside of your first degree, but you can't message people outside of your first degree. So I included this link about a free account versus um, a premium account. If anyone has questions about this, this is a great place to go and get them answered. It'll walk through a little bit about the differences. Um, I have a premium account as an alum of LinkedIn. They grant you with one for several years, which is great because I've found that I've really used it in this current job and it's helped me to connect with alums that I might not have been connected with or um, would have able, uh, been able to talk to otherwise. I think from a business standpoint, it's really easy to find, get in, it's another way to get someone's attention. So if you've got a client that's not answering or you wanna build out your portfolio, like this is, it might be valuable and a lot of companies will pay for it as a business expense. So that's another way to maybe think about it. So I would definitely do that. And then one last thing I do want to share about your profile, and then I'll jump into everyone else's questions, is when you're putting and listing your experience, make sure that you're choosing, just as you want to link to your company's page, make sure you're choosing job titles that are available from a drop-down menu. And the reason this matters is because when recruiters and HR professionals go on and search the network, they're searching by pre-populated job titles. So 
If you're a marketing guru, that's really great. Throw that up here under your name. Do not make that the job title that you have. Um, make sure you would put something like marketing coordinator, marketing executive, whatever that might be. So I will open it up now to any questions. Terrific. Um, what do you do um, if you're looking for a job and you have current connections from your job? Your current, yes, excuse me, <laughs> let me rephrase that. If you're looking for a job and you are connected to people within your organization, what should you do? That's a good question. Um, if you're looking, actively seeking employment opportunities and you don't want current employees or people in your network to know, I would not put it on your profile because that's the number one way they'll find out. Um, you do have the ability, so I wouldn't put anything in your summary. I wouldn't put anything up here. Keep it keep it neutral because you don't want other people to know that you're seeking employment. There is a button within LinkedIn now that I believe allows you to say that you're a current job seeker without publicizing it on your profile. So I would go about that route. Um, keep in mind though if if the company you work for has the products to search the network and it says that you're a behind-the-scenes job seeker, I don't know what that would exactly mean in terms of if they could see it or not, if they were in the tool searching the network. Again, I don't know that they would be bringing up you as a, as a potential candidate, but something to be aware of. Um, what can you do to increase your profile visibility to recruiters? That's a good question. Um, something I would do is, first of all, have a built-out profile. A lot of people that, again, like we talked about the photo, why is it so important? Um, people click on profiles with photos. They don't click on ones that don't have them. So make sure that your profile is built out. Also, as I had previously mentioned, make sure that when you're picking job titles and there's drop-down options within LinkedIn, always pick from a drop-down because that is the way in which people search on the network. So they search by keyword. Um, also, I would think about if you're, if you're looking for project coordinator roles and the companies that you're looking at title it something different. If you have that ability to change that a little bit, maybe do that. Um, also, keywords that are in those job descriptions that you're interested in looking for put in your profile because those are the things that someone is going to find based on searching on the network. How do you ask for recommendations if you've been raising a family for the last 20 years or a stay-at-home mom, let's say? Good question. So if you've been at home um, with your family and you're looking to beef up your profile and you want to add some recommendations or seek out those recommendations, something I would do would be think about some of the other things that you've done that might be translatable. So if you've volunteered with organizations, if you've um, participated in community activity, if you've been a part of your, your kids' schooling, um, there's always something that you can find that would be relatable in that in a work sense. So picking things that you've done over the years and adding those and asking people to write recommendations in regards to that, I think is the way I would position it. Great, and we have one last question. Uh, what would you do if you have two or more work interests? So you're in finance, but you also do animal training, let's say. So what do you do if you've got a couple interests? Um, so what I would do is list out, you should always list your present company as the one that you're putting more focus or energy into and put a secondary one underneath that. And what you could say in your summary is, I work part-time as this and I work part-time as this and indicate that um, you could even make it fun under your under your title, under your name. Um, you know, part-time finance, part-time animal trainer, if that's what you do. So I think that 
being honest about it and um, showcasing it on different levels within the profile is helpful instead of only relying on it to be in the experience. Because of the summary, you're given a lot of space to explain what you're doing, and that would be a great place to do that. Well, great. I know I'm going to have to run in and update my LinkedIn profile based on this. I uh, really appreciate uh, all that we've learned. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining today's presentation. And a special thank you to Lauren for this informative presentation. As a reminder, please watch your email for a link to the recording of today's presentation along with a follow-up summary. We invite you to join us online at careers.uchicagoalumni.org where you'll find upcoming events, webinar archives, our alumni jobs board, and a form to let us know when you've hired another UChicago graduate at your organization. Thank you again for join joining us, and we hope to see you at our next alumni career webinar. <laughs>